Hey everyone! In honor of National Unicorn Day, which was April 9th, so sorry I'm a little late, I'm going to be showing you how to make a unicorn dress and headband for your stuffed animal. This ended up being more of a two-piece unicorn tutu and top, but that wasn't as catchy, so I'm just calling it a unicorn dress. Now let's get started! Okay, so the first thing I'm going to make is the skirt out of tulle, and I wanted this to be really puffy, so I decided to do just a few white layers to go underneath the colored layers. So here I have a piece of tulle that is 45 inches by 5 inches, and I've already cut a lot of these, so I'm going to take three of these rectangles and stack them together. And then I'm pinning them together along the top edge, and that's where I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to use a straight stitch for this on the longest stitch setting, and you really just want to make sure you don't lock your stitch on either side. It's okay if you accidentally lock it on one, but at least one should be open. Also, you'll want the threads at the end to be pretty long. Once that's done, I'm going to take one of the threads on one of the sides and start lightly pulling it, and that'll start gathering the tool around that thread. Then I can just push that down to more the middle and keep going. This is a really long piece, that's why I like not locking both ends, so I can also start ruffling it from the other end. You'll want to do this until it's just long enough to wrap around your stuffed animal's waist with a little bit of overlap. So for my Build-A-Bear, this measurement was about 16 inches, so right now I'm just measuring the top to make sure it's the right length. Once it's the length you want, you can take the two ends of the thread and then just tie them together. I'm going to do this twice to really lock it in place, and if your other side wasn't locked, you want to tie those together too. After trimming those extra long threads, this first layer of the skirt is done! Now, like I said, I wanted the skirt to be really puffy and not see-through at all, so I ended up doing two more of these, except maybe I had four layers instead of three layers of tulle. So by the end, I think I had 11 layers of tulle total, and this is just for the under layers, so I think looking back, I could have gotten away with just doing one or two of these. But after making two more of these, I tried it on my stuffed animal, and at least it wasn't too see-through, which was what I was going for. If you only have white tulle, you could just stop here and start sewing this together, but I think to make this truly a unicorn skirt, I need to add some more colors. So at the fabric store, I was able to find some purple tulle, and this pink one I already had from my princess dress video, which you should definitely watch if you haven't, and I'd call this more of like a salmon-y pink, but I also picked up this other pink that I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference, but it's more of maybe like a bubblegum pink. I'm not really sure. I would have liked light blue, but they didn't have any, so this is what I got. So I'm going to cut all of these, including some white, into rectangles that are 12 inches by 9 inches, and that's because they're going to be folded in half. Okay, so to put this together, I already have the pink one folded in half along the 12 inch side, so the long way. And now I'm going to take my next color, which was white, and fold it around that, and then pin them together right where they overlap. I'm having them overlap like a few inches, but they ended up getting separated anyway. Next, I'm doing the salmon color, and then after that I'm doing the purple. And that's all the colors in my rotation. So once they're pinned together, I'm going to sew along the top edge that isn't the folded side, and same thing, I'm not going to lock my stitch at the beginning or end. After that, I'm going to gather this by just pulling on one of the threads, and obviously right now you can barely see the colors, so I wanted to condense this enough that, you know, the colors were actually saturated and you could see them. So I ended up pulling this together really tightly, so as you can see, by the end, it's only maybe a few inches wide at the top. And this was one of the tighter ones, but I think for the others, I left it a little bit longer. And the colors still aren't super noticeable, so I think I should have gone with brighter colors and not just pastels. But after locking both ends, I'm trying to smooth it out, and here is what that little bunch looks like. And obviously, it's really small, so I'm going to have to make enough of these to fully wrap around that top layer of the skirt. Now, if at this point you're thinking, gee, this seems like a lot of work, I'm here to tell you, it was. I know we're only four minutes into the video, but this has taken me hours. At this point, I couldn't turn back, but what I recommend instead is doing one of those easy tutus with tulle and ribbon, and that's all you need. All it is is tying pieces of tulle around a ribbon or elastic, and that way it's a lot easier to alternate colors. It will still take some time, but is much less frustrating than this method. So there are plenty of tutorials on how to do it out there, but I did this in my ballerina tutu video, so I'll link that down below. The reason I planned to do it this way was so I could sew this to the shirt eventually, but there were so many layers and it was so thick at the top that I couldn't do that, so I might as well have just done the easier method. 
But I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that if you do exactly what I do, it's just going to be a lot of work. But okay, let's move on to the final step, which is sewing all these pieces together. For the colored pieces, I ended up making about four or five of these total, just enough to cover the whole skirt. So first I'm going to stack all the bottom layers because those are all still separate. And then I'm going to add one colored layer on top and just do this all in one go using a needle and thread. I was afraid it would be too thick for the sewing machine and this will give me more control. I'm going to be using a whip stitch for this, so that means I'm just going to insert my needle through the back for every stitch and that way the thread will kind of loop over it and kind of hold down those edges because at this point I still wasn't sure if I was going to be able to sew this onto the shirt. So I didn't end up with the cleanest edge, but I think doing the stitch this way smoothed it out a little bit. This was eating up my thread really fast, so you'll have to start with a long piece and keep replacing it, but I started spacing the stitches out more to save time. Now here's me finishing up just that first section, barely in frame, but I think you get the idea. Here is what the tutu looks like when it's finished, and I'll be honest, I was too lazy to add Velcro or something in the back to hold it together, so I just ended up going with a safety pin. But the good thing about that is it can fit different stuffed animals because it's adjustable. But yeah, let's move on to the shirt, which was surprisingly way faster and easier for me. Okay, so I'm going to be doing more of like a t-shirt style, but without the sleeves, I'm going to do tool sleeves. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you've probably seen me do these same steps a lot. But I'm first going to cut out my patterns. The printable versions will be linked in the description box. And for the first one, I have the front piece. I only need one of these. And then the back pieces, I need two of these, but I want them mirror images of each other. So I'm folding the fabric over first, pinning it on, then cutting it out. And wow, I must be getting used to saying this kind of stuff because that only took me one take. Okay, so I ironed these off camera and I need to clean my iron because it got some of the sides dirty. So the side with the smudge is going to be the bad side. And with that side facing up, I'm going to fold over the bottom edge of this front piece. And I'm going to do two tiny folds so there isn't any fraying even on the bad side. Then I'm going to make my stitch length 2.5 and sew a straight stitch across here. After that, it'll look like this, and I did the same thing to the back pieces, so just hemmed those bottom edges. And now I need to hem the necklines of these, so to make it easier to fold this over, I'm going to do some cuts around the especially curved parts. And then I'm going to fold that over only once because doing it a second time, I feel like it gets a little tricky. After pinning that all down, I'm going to use a straight stitch to hem it. I'm going to repeat the same thing to the back pieces, and here is what they look like when they're done. And next, I'm going to hem the inner edges of the back pieces where it's going to overlap. So I'm just checking with the front piece to make sure I fold them over just the right amount so they still overlap for the Velcro. I'm just double checking that real quick, and now I can do a straight stitch along where I've pinned. Next, I'm going to sew the shoulders together, so I'm going to flip everything good side to good side and line up those top edges. And if they are uneven, you'll want to focus on lining up the edges of the neckline as opposed to the sleeve part. After sewing straight across there, I'm going to trim that little extra that was sticking out. And for some reason, I decided to add the Velcro at this point, but you could do the sleeves first or the Velcro. So I'm taking one side and pinning it to the good side of one of the back edges. And then the other one should be on the bad side of the other side. You know, just so they Velcro correctly. I like to do really thin strips like this, so I can just do a zigzag stitch straight down so I don't have to deal with going around the entire perimeter, but you could also do that. Okay, once that's on, we are almost done, but now it's time to attach the sleeves. But before we do that, we have to make the sleeves, which means ruffling more tulle. No! I'm just being dramatic. It's only one more time, or I guess two because there's two sleeves. But I just took a rectangle of tulle 5 inches wide by about 17 inches long and then folded in half lengthwise. And now I'm going to sew a straight stitch along one of the edges and not lock my stitch. Then I'm going to ruffle it the same way I did for the rest of this video. To check the length I need this to be, I'm going to line this up around the sleeve openings of the shirt. And once it's the right length, I'm going to tie off those ends. And now I can pin them good side to good side like this and sew it with a straight stitch. Right now the sleeve is the same length all the way around, but I actually want to cut this so it's kind of flared at the top. So I'm cutting it really short at the bottom and then leaving it around the same length by the top and then repeating that on the back. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps to make and sew on the sleeve for the other side. Next, the last thing I'm going to do is sew up the sides of this shirt. So I'm going to fold it in half good side to good side, pin it along the sides, and then just sew straight down with a straight stitch. 
Now this top is finally done, and if you want to go over the top with the unicorn theme, you could paint a little unicorn face on here. But I figured I'd leave the top neutral so it could be worn with other outfits. Okay, so this video was taking so long to film, I had to take the nail polish off because it was so messed up. So I'm going to leave my nails bare, let them breathe for a bit. But the final step for this outfit is to make the unicorn headband, which I think if you make anything from this video, it should be this because it's really pretty and the only distinctly unicorn thing about this outfit. Okay, so first I'm going to make the unicorn horn and here is the pattern for it. I'll link it down below and I just need to cut it out of some white felt. But the good news is this is no sew. I'm going to be using a hot glue to make this. Next, I'm going to fold this in half with whatever side you want to be the good side on the inside, but with felt it doesn't really matter. Now I'm using little bits of hot glue to stick those edges together. And it's kind of tricky because you obviously don't want your fingers too close to the edges. So I'd recommend using like a big clip for this to hold those edges together. And so by the end, I finally realized to use a bobby pin. And this was even a bad bobby pin, but it still worked to get those tiny edges together. It's okay if this looks like a complete mess because the next step is to fully let it dry and then turn this inside out. This was pretty tough because this is a pretty small opening we're starting with, but if the bottom edges split apart a little bit, that's okay because it's eventually going to get covered. But I'd recommend getting the bottom part turned inside out, and then once you kind of have a pocket, you can use like a pencil to poke out the rest of it. Once it's fully turned inside out, I can start stuffing this, and you could always use like fabric scraps if you don't have actual stuffing. But after doing it little by little so it was fully stuffed, I'm going to cut out a circle for the bottom of this and hot glue that on. I just put hot glue around the circle and then stood the horn on top. And mine was kind of off-centered, but you could always trim off any extra. And this is going to be covered with flowers on the headband. Next, I'm going to give it that signature unicorn horn swirl by taking a needle and thread. And I only had white thread for this, but if you have gold or a different color you want to use, that would be great. But I'm going to have the thread start at the top, and then I'm going to tightly wrap this around to the bottom of the horn to give it that swirl. Once you get to the bottom, you want to make sure none of that thread has moved, and poke your needle into the base of the horn. And while I was there, I sewed up the back of the horn since there was an opening. And then I just locked my stitch, and that is it. You'll see later that I added a little gold over this thread, but I think it still looks really good as it is. Okay, so to really dress up this headband, I'm going to be adding some felt roses. They are really easy to make, just a bit time consuming, but I'd highly recommend them. I found this pattern online and after spending way too much time cutting out the pattern, I realized this is going to be a nightmare to somehow secure onto the felt and then cut out exactly. So I'm going to show you how to freehand this. I first just used the pattern to get the basic outline of the circle. Then I'm going to cut this circle into a spiral, but keeping that starting shape round. And I kind of followed the pattern for this, just looking how thick that spiral was. But I just gradually made the swirl a little bit smaller as I got further in. And keep in mind, you'll have this little sharp bit sticking out that we'll cut off later. Just make sure you're making one continuous cut. Once I got to the very inside, I just cut out a little circle. And that's the first step done. Now I'm going to smooth out that little extra piece real quick. And next, I need to start scalloping the edges. So I'm just going to start going around the outer edge of this swirl and cutting little curved shapes like flower petals, basically copying the same shape as the pattern. I probably didn't do as many curves as the pattern, but my roses turned out fine and I think this is just way easier than having to attach the pattern to the felt somehow. But if you did want to do that, I think the person I got this pattern from recommended taping the entire thing down and then just cutting through the tape. So this is the time consuming part I was talking about. I remember getting so frustrated the first time I made this because my hands were hurting from the scissors, but in the end, I think the pain was worth it. Okay, I'm going to stop once I get to the very center. And now is the fun part when we finally get to wrap this into the rose. So right in the center, I'm going to start to tightly roll that up. And this is honestly probably the hardest part, just getting it started. It took me a few tries, but as it started getting bigger, I kept my thumb on the top and my pointer finger, or I guess my middle finger on the bottom, to help just keep it flat. And it's kind of hard to see because my thumb is there, but I'm just trying to wrap the petals so they kind of go in between each other. Sometimes they were on top of each other, which happens because this was freehanded, but I just tried my best to adjust them so they were kind of separated. And once it's done, it should look like this. So beautiful. Before gluing this together, I'm just using two pins to hold it in place. And then I'm cutting out a circle of felt with the same color and gluing that onto the back. And then I'm adding a dot of glue to the end of the spiral. 
Here is the final rose. I think it turned out so cute. Now I just need to make a few more off camera. The last component I need for the top of this headband is some unicorn ears. So I have my pattern and I'm going to fold the felt in half so I get two of these. And if you remember from last video, I did not have any light pink felt. So instead of cutting out like a smaller pink ear shape for the middle, I'm just going to use some chalk pastels to add pink to the inner ear. This doesn't have to be perfect because I'm eventually going to fold them over like this before attaching them. Okay, now the only component I haven't made yet is the actual headband. So I'm going to cut out a long rectangle out of a cereal box and try it on my stuffed animal and just see where I want it to end. And then after trimming that, I'm going to make the ends a little bit skinnier because I think most headbands are like that. So I'm just taking a little bit off the sides and having the middle be the widest part. And next, I'm going to take some craft wire and attach this to the back. You could also use like a pipe cleaner or anything that'll help it hold its shape. And I'm just using regular scotch tape to attach this. Once it's taped, at this point you can either paint it whatever color you want or wrap it with something like ribbon or fabric, which is what I'm going to do. I really wanted a sparkly component, so I happen to have this sparkly silver ribbon and I'm going to just wrap this around using just enough to cover the cardboard. Once I got to the end, I left a little extra so I could cover that side, and I'm using a little hot glue to secure it. Now I can bend this headband into shape, and we can finally start adding all of our toppings. <laughs> okay, so here are all the roses I made. Before I attach these, I'm going to color this white one with a little bit of pink, and I meant to do kind of like an ombre, like just at the tips, but when I first blotted this on, it kind of completely covered the inside pink, so I just did it full pink. Okay, so I'm first going to cover the base of the horn with hot glue and stick this on to the middle. I did not get mine perfectly centered, but you know, that's how it is sometimes. Then I've already planned out the color order, so I'm going to do the ones in the middle first, and I can cover the entire back and stick that onto half of the base of the horn. The other two roses don't have much to hold on to, so I'm just putting glue at the bottom part and then having that stick to the headband. Now finally, I'm going to add the ears, so I'm first going to put a dot of glue kind of at the top edge and fold it over, and then I'm going to glue these onto the side roses, so that'll be what those hold on to. But after that, this is pretty much done, but the one finishing touch I wanted to add was some gold to the swirl of the horn. I happen to have this white string with a little gold swirl, and luckily the gold can be separated, so I separated that and then kind of stretched it out to make it less twisty. And then I'm painting some liquid glue along the thread and wrapping the gold around that. And at the top, I didn't follow the thread exactly because the swirl wasn't perfect, so I kind of just adjusted it to look better. And then I let this fully dry before trimming off the ends. Okay, after all that hard work, we can finally try on everything together. So I'm going to start with the shirt and then the tutu, which is looking kind of rough, but I'm just glad it is over. I was going for puffy, and boy did I get puffy. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure if you soak tulle in hot water, it'll kind of, you know, mat down a little bit, so I might have to do that later. Finally, we have the unicorn headband that really shows what this is all about, and I'm honestly probably the proudest of the headband because I just love how the flowers turned out. But yeah, that is it for this unicorn-themed outfit. I really hope you all enjoyed this. I've been really busy lately, but I'll keep trying to post as consistently as possible. Please give this video a like, comment any video requests you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time! Bye!